Hello, good afternoon or morning or evening, depending where you're from, and welcome for joining us at our, our very first Yanguru Music webinar. Um, I hope this session, you'll find this session uh, informative and useful. And of course, uh, it will be recorded, so if there's anything you missed, um, you will be able to, to find that after the fact. And I'd also like to note that um, Johan is here assisting Hello. me, and he'll be uh, trying his best to answer questions as they happen, um, as I'm presenting here. So the best place to answer questions is you should see a Q&A option on your little uh, control bar. Um, so that's where you can, can type in and post your question. And uh, Johan, like I said, Johan will, will be answering them as they happen, and then I'll, I'll scan after I have a, um, you know, complete the presentation and, and see if there's anything important that I should um, go back to and uh, expand on. So what I'm going to do now is start sharing my screen. So if you give me just a moment. There we go. So you should all be able to see my screen now. Um, what you're looking at right now is the Angaroo Music homepage or landing page. So this is where uh, both people on the recipient, you know, mostly the, the broadcaster, TV, and radio, and um, also the content owner, the senders of their content to the recipients would come to um, log in or, or sign up if it's their, their first time, you know, coming to get an account. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just jump to uh, a view of the Yangaroo library. I'm going to show you sort of the, the end product of your efforts. Yes. Uh, we have someone here, Carlo, is saying that there is not audio. So let's check if uh, uh, they, he is the only one with the problem. Um, do you mind checking your audio first? Mute. Yeah, should be my mute to the test. This is like if you go back to mute. Um, can you test the audio? Uh, it not. says we are connected. Okay, so here we have some feedback. Thank you, Shannon. She says that she can hear, no problem at all. Ray says that the audio output is very choppy. Uh, audio is good. Uh, audio is fine, all uh, good here, Kelvin. So yeah, I'm sorry for the interruption. It seems that we don't have any problems anymore with the audio. Probably just the first participant or the first person that was having issues. Okay, so we'll we'll move forward. Hopefully, uh, if if it continues to be an issue, please let us know. Oh, I just dropped little Rue, our mascot. Make sure we don't get interrupted by my phone either. Okay, so uh, to carry on here, what you're seeing right now is what we call the library. Um, so I'm jumping to the recipient end. I'm, I'm making the assumption that, that most of us, most of our participants are content owners, um, people with music and music video that they're looking uh, to get on the air, um, to get the broadcaster so they can make that choice and, and, and put it on the air. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how the recipients of the radio and TV broadcasters and other promotional outlets are, will receive your content, receive the content from, from all sources, from uh, the, you know, major label companies, um, large indies, um, down to, to emerging unsigned artists as well. Um, so this is what we call the library. So this is where releases, these are releases are like the promotional packages that the senders set up and deliver to the broadcasters. Um, so these releases are stored in the library. Uh, the, the latest is at the top, at the beginning. Um, and this doesn't matter if you're you know, from Interscope or from, uh, I'm looking for an independent here, or, or from Frontside Promotions Group or, or Canvas Media. Um, or a, you know, a, a do-it-yourself independent. As soon as you send that release, it's going to be at the very top of everyone's library. Um, so again, this is, is is where you access new music. So uh, let's say I'm a um, you know a pop station, pop radio station. I'm interested in the new Jonas Brothers release. They haven't released new music in I don't know, it's five or six years, maybe more. So I'm looking at this release right here. Uh, I have a lot of options. Um, the first thing I can do is uh, post feedback, comment. Um, information 
back to the sender. That is only, information only goes back to the actual sender of this release. And they can actually reply and it would only come back to, to me as well. Uh, another thing is just the info button, which gives me sort of a snapshot of what's contained in this release. Uh, it allows me to play it, stream it, um, the information that they've included in the release detail. Uh, lets me know that there's only audio in this release, um, sender contacts, label, send date, all of that information. So it's the important information at a glance. Um, of course, I should also point out that I can, I can play and, and download uh, this content that's being sent to me, you know, right from this library view as well as going into the details. So when I hit stream, it goes right into the player down here at the bottom. Let's me know what song's being streamed. Um, and then, of course, I can go right into the details which is a, a deep dive into the, um, the nuts and bolts of the release itself. So this shows me uh, the picture is prominent. Um, I'm able to download the audio here, of course. All my information is available to me. Um, high-res artwork can be included. Uh, and sometimes it's very, yes, this one is very high-res, as you can see. Um, so that allows the stations to use that for their, for their websites or, or whatever purposes that they like. Um, and then something of important to note here is the, the metadata that's included. So it, it's important to note here that this isn't just a, like a Dropbox or um, you know, a, a Spotify library with downloads available. It's actually a professional uh, platform um, service that radio uses to integrate with their systems. So an example of that is, is the metadata that's included. So it's very important um, that the sender include uh, especially the ISRC code, but also the songwriter publishing information so that, you know, the airplay can be properly report when it's reported to the, the right societies like VMI and ASCAP, et cetera. Um, they can track, you know, exactly who the rights holders are and, and who those royalty payments should go to. So it helps ensure um, quick and accurate uh, royalty turnaround, which is really important for, for radio airplay and, and, and music video television airplay as well. Um, so when, when I download this, this track as a radio station, I can choose either WAVE or MP3, um, and this metadata is automatically downloaded with my song, and it's um, in a format that can be automatically ingested into my automation system at the station. So there's no, no more manual data entry uh, that can include typos and misinformation. So it's all automated and it, it's all, you know, helps ensure that that information is, is accurate into the system um, from the source, from you, the sender, uh, to the radio, into the playback systems, um, into the reporting to the, the right societies and, and, and everything like that. Also, there are also, um, tools, as you can see down here, there's an app um, that radio can use to uh, do a lot of different things. Like, for example, make sure that everything that's delivered is, is automatically downloaded to certain folders, uh, all, all kinds of different, uh, um, you know, advanced sort of information like that. Like if I'm, for example, if I'm a radio programmer, a music director, I want to be able to download tracks right into our you know, it might be a, a, a central computer, a central server for the station as opposed to my personal computer. Um, so the app would allow that to do that, you know, connecting into their own network. Um, I'm not going to pre pretend to understand all of these different features and, and functionality. I just know that they work and they're there and they're used by radio to help make their lives easier and keep the whole process automated. Um, so jumping back to the library quickly, I just wanted to show you one more thing, one more tool that the radio or, or TV broadcasters will use to, um, to to help make their lives easier. So of course they have you know all of the content from all of the different sources in, in one platform, one centralized location, which is very important because if I'm working in this industry, I don't want to have to jump around to different sites and logins and remember passwords. If I'm getting all my content in one place, that just makes my life easier. So we can see there's you know, I think there's 20 or 40 releases on this page. This one goes back 311 for this user. Um, so an important tool I can do for the new content, let's say, oh, look, we just had a release come out since the last time we were in the library, this new James Barker band single. So let's imagine that I'm setting up my music meeting for this week. Um, something I can do is I can queue up my playlist. So just press play on a bunch of songs that I want to uh, include and sit and listen with on my team. This week, we'll include this Benny Blanc and Celia Gomez song as well. 
Um, I can go to my player. All these songs are loaded up. I can this week's music meeting three six for example. I can save this. I can save this playlist, and then it goes up to my playlist section. I'm gonna turn this down briefly. And I go to my playlist function, and you'll see that it's saved in here. And something I can do is I can take this playlist I just created, and I can save it with other users in my organization. So say, this is my, you know, my, my co-music director, my program director. Um, I can share that, so that playlist goes into their library and mine. So when we sit in our music meeting, we simply have to, you know, pull up our library and, and press play on this playlist to, to listen and, and consider the, 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 the tracks that, that we are interested in adding this week. Um, and of course, I can just play the playlist, of course, like that, and it'll play right away. Um, Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you to give you an idea first of, of how your content is accepted and, and used and, and interacted on um, the broadcaster end of things. And of course, there's a search function. So if anything's off the, the second page or a few pages back, you can, you can pull it up very quickly and easily. Um, great. So now that we've seen that, I want to show you how you can be the person, if you haven't been already, to get a release into the library of, of radio and, and television broadcasters. So the starting point would be back here at the landing page, and that's theangaroo.com slash music. And here I have a, a sign up and login button, um, as well as more information. If, if you're interested in having a look, um, it gives you a little bit of an idea. Some, some of the, the, you know, the company's clients that we work with, it has a, a one minute sort of product video that gives you an overview of, of how the service works, if you haven't seen that already. As we show you how industry professionals use Yangaroo Music to deliver broadcast quality music and music video to broadcasters and other promotional outlets. So I'm not going to um, play that whole thing. You can check it out on your own time if you like. Uh, but going down here, I, I, I wanted to show you, we have basically two tiers of access for senders. Um, we have basic and pro. So when you sign up as a music sender, you automatically receive access to, to a basic Yangaroo music account. Um, this allows you, like it's called the basics, it allows you to upload uh, music or video, create a release with limited options, and send it to destinations of your choice. And, and these options are limited to packages of radio stations um, and, and music video television stations, as opposed to with Pro, um, which is, is by far the best choice. It gives you lots of features and functionality and flexibility with the way your releases work, the templates that you use, um, the destinations that are available to you. You have full access to our entire database of, of radio and, and television uh, broadcasters as well as other promotional outlets. Um, and you can select them on an a la carte basis, station by station as opposed to by package. Um, there's discounted delivery rates available with the, with the pro option as well. Um, so the GoPro, first you would sign up, log into your basic account, and there's a, an upgrade to pro button. Um, the fee is 99 per month. There's also a yearly option, which is 999, 12 months for the price of 10. And um, both options you, is flexible. You can opt out um, in and out as you see fit. All your work is maintained. The releases you've already sent are, are remain unaffected. If you so, if there's a um, you know, a period, a couple of months when you're in between releases, you don't have access, you don't have need to use the service, you don't have to pay the membership fees for Pro, you can simply opt out while your work is maintained and then um, re-upgrade again when, when you have, when it's time for your next project. Um, so we'll jump here, I'll just show you how to, how the sign up function works. I click sign up. I'm taken to the sign up, we just fill in um, some information, I would select music and video sender, my name, email, you know, some information where, I, where I'm located, um, and then it will give me, you know, immediate access to choose a username and password to get into my basic account. And so for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna skip that. I'm just gonna go right into um, a pro account, show you how things are done with the pro account. So this account I was using to show you a library is, is a, a special user. It's, it's both a recipient as, as under the Yangaroo organization, but it's also has pro um, send features as well. So what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to create a release. So there's a button here. You can also do that from the manage section where you can manage your, your sent draft releases, the files you have uploaded, custom lists available, uh, notifications. Um, so I can hit create release, I can hit create release. So I'm going to hit create release and we're going to uh, quickly create a release here and, and, and send it to uh, my library so you can see exactly how that happens and, and get in that, you know, see all the, the, the functions and, and tools at, at my disposal. Um, so for this purpose, I'm going to do a video release. I have um, some assets ready. I'm going to mimic the latest uh, Cardi B and Bruno Mars Please Me uh, video release that came out release recently via Atlantic Records. So uh, bear with me here just for a second. Bruno Mars, please me. The label is Atlantic Records. Uh, I'm going to leave PO number. That's for billing purposes. We don't have to worry about that. I leave myself as a contact. I'm not going to put my phone number in um, or a website, but but I can, of course, if I if I choose to. Those just aren't required fields, so we'll skip them for now. Um, also, what I want to show you is is the options with delivery stream, download, um, and release end date. Um, people often have questions about what this means. So by default, these dates are all going to be right now, right now, right now, and nothing. So the only reason I would change this is if I wanted to set up my release but not deliver it right away, schedule it for a future time. So for example, if I wanted to set this up to go tomorrow morning, um, you know, I would click March 6th at, you know, whatever time, 9 a.m. And it wouldn't be delivered. When I complete this release, it won't be delivered right away until that delivery date rolls away. That's the date it will appear in libraries. Um, stream date by default would be the same as the delivery date, which just means when the release is delivered, streaming is enabled on the release so the recipients can, can listen to it online. Um, same as download date. Um, in some scenarios, uh, people will send releases out that are stream only for a certain period of time. That's when you would use this functionality. So for example, let's say I want to deliver my release right away, but I don't want it to you know, recipients to be able to download it yet. I would make the stream date available as of now, and I would put the download date into the future. Um, and then their download buttons will be grayed out until that future date rolls around. So that's how that works. That's how those dates work. And then release end date is if you want it to disappear from a library for whatever reason after, you know, whatever amount of time that you determine. Um, so for, for this purpose, I'm going to leave these as blank. Um, because I want it to be sent right away and I don't have any special stream or download permission. Um, the, the countdown mode is another um, option that we can do. If, if your delivery date is in the future and you enable countdown mode, uh, a placeholder will go into the recipient's libraries with, with a clock counting down. So if I wanted to set this all up right now, um, alert everyone that the new Cardi B and Bruno Mars video is coming, uh, but it won't be available until 9 a.m. tomorrow. I would do my delivery date at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and I would enable countdown mode. That way, um, people browsing the library would get uh, be able to see that it's coming at that, that certain time. But again, for this purpose, we're just going to leave everything at the default. And then the next step is choosing your destinations. This is a video release. It's a hip-hop R&B video. So I'm going to select our video network package, Urban. Um, this provides you with savings. It's seven of the biggest um, urban music video networks in the US and Canada, and you get that for the price of four. It's $250, where these networks would be $65 each with a pro account. Um, and it includes MTV and BET and Fuse and Revolt and Much Music um, and a couple others that I, that I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, it's, it's very robust. It's, it's all the big national networks for that that genre of music. We also have a rock pop package in a country which, which are similar, seven networks for that price. Uh, one last thing I want to do is add myself to this. Add myself personally. So under that I go browse contacts. I'm going to find myself and add myself so it, it goes into my library so I can show you how that works.
and it will find me. There's lots of me. That's probably why it took so long. Anyway, I know that that's the me I'm looking for. Uh, so this is what's been added now as our destination. So when we actually send this release, uh, all the people registered at these destinations and myself is, is going to be who receives it. So I go along to the next step and that's files. So this is where I add the assets, um, the audio files, video files, images, documents um, that I'm gonna include in this release. Um, and this is where you can also upload that content. So you, when you upload your content, it's stored on your account in, under your, your files, your, your file manager. Um, and you can just simply add it here, add it from here. So for example, I have this video already uploaded. So I'm just going to add it like this. Um, this shows me that it's HD. It's it has closed captions and it has passed, uh, or okay, sorry, already been delivered. It's, it's passed quality control. So, um, and that's what we do. When, when you upload a video, um, our team will automatically give it a quality control check. That means that our video techs will, um, you know, scrutinize it to make sure that it meets the broadcast specifications that the broadcasters are asking for. Uh, so when they receive it, they see a green check mark, they know that it, it, it's fit to put on the air and they won't have any technical issues with it. Um, but you're also able to submit non-broadcast files initially um, without closed captioning. This will give them a chance to review it in their music meeting um, and let you know if, if it's accepted, um, that they want to play it on their network, and then they'll request the broadcast version, which will uh, require closed captioning. It will need to meet the broadcast specs. And, and we can provide closed captioning services. We can do file conversion if, if you can't meet the specs. Um, and we can also do edits if, if you know, if censorship's required, if you need to, to mute explicit language or blur some certain imagery in the video to make it, it fit for um, television broadcast. So anyway, I've added that video. Uh, I'm also going to add a lyric sheet because that is required for music videos. So I'm going to go to documents. And again, I pre-uploaded uh, this lyric sheet. So I'm going to add that there and images i'm going to go to image i'm going to add my cardi b and bruno mars image so these are all added to my release now these files now i also wanted to show you um, the upload section so for example for a video it, it's a drop folder there so if we um came here i wanted to upload this video again i could just drag and drop it in there drag and drop it in there uh, give it an art, uh, name and a title and start uploading it. So that's how you get the files up onto your, into your file manager to add to these releases. You can do it here. You can have them pre-uploaded and just add them. Um, but I'm going to, I was going to try and get out of there. Unfortunately, I couldn't kill that upload in progress, and so I had to get out of here. But our progress has been saved as in drafts, because when you complete each section, um, it's automatically saved as a draft release, something that you're working on. So you don't have to get it all done at once. You can start working on it, come back, et cetera. Um, so we're back at the file section. So we haven't completed this, so I just have to re-add these files. I'll do that quickly. Need the lyric sheet, need an image as well. Oh, I need to go back. There's one more thing I wanted to show you. Depending on what video networks you've selected, it's going to change what metadata is required in your video itself. So once you've added your video, there's a little edit button, um, which shows you. So in the package I've included, um, these networks require specific uh, metadata information. It is basically like an online submission form. In the old days, when you tapes, instead of do it, do it with the Angular DMDS, 
uh, you would have to send, um, fill out, you know, a, a submission form with all this information and send it in with it. Now it's done automatically. Um, so this one, I, I filled out all the required fields. If there's anything that you don't have access to right away, you can put a placeholder like a zero or a TBD or an NA and come back and fill it in after. Uh, but you'll see the information that they require. Um, I've filled this all in previously to save us the time. So I'm just going to cancel out of there. I wanted to make you aware of that part of it. Um, click to the next section. And something I touched on earlier is our post-production services. So you can order that for your release at this point. So for example, let's say the video you've added, you know, it's meant to be a broadcast version, but it doesn't have closed captioning yet. Uh, you can select closed captioning as a service. It'll add the feed to the um, to your release when, when you actually check it out at, at the bottom when you, when, when you um, complete it and pay for it. Um, and then our team will get that captioning done and, and then we send that video for you once it's ready. Um, so in this case, I don't need any services. My video is captioned, it's ready to go. Um, the next step is tracking. So we have a, a partnership with Nielsen BDS. Um, they're one of the two preeminent um, tracking monitoring services in North America. And they monitor the airplay on both radio and music video television stations. Um, and to you, you can get a subscription with them directly. Uh, if you have a lot of releases, it might make a lot of it might make sense um, because it's it's uh, a little bit more expensive than seventy five dollars. So basically, what we do is we offer the ability to um, receive the, the tracking data, the airplay data from Nielsen BDS. Um, on a per song or per video basis at $75. And that gives you um, all of the airplay data, uh, aggregate total specifics per station um, every week for eight weeks, and also all of the historical data. So if it has been playing anywhere before that point, that, that'll show up in that report as well. So that's a $75 add-on I could add to my release. I'm not gonna do that in this case because it's just a test. And then this takes me to the presentation section um, where I lay out what my release is going to look like in their library. So there's a, a number of different templates um, for the info section. I'm going to choose this one because it puts the, the picture front and center. I'm going to add a logo to my release. This is an Atlantic release, so we're going to add the Atlantic logo. And um, this is my artwork. So if I had, if I uploaded multiple images with this release, it would give me the ability to select which one was the primary image um, based on that template. It also, I can also upload new pictures here as well as if I, I, I think, oh, I, I should add this picture and this picture to this release as well. Um, so anyway, that's my primary artwork. I'm gonna make sure that that's selected. And then this is my release notes where I can put any information about the song or the video itself. Uh, typically this can be, um, you know, sometimes people take great care and design big HTML images to go in here. Um, but normally it's, it's a brief, you know, couple lines of information on the artist, uh, especially if it's not a well-known artist, um, you know, tour dates uh, and links to the socials is, is what normally goes there. So I'm going to, uh, I have a document here with that, you know, no one really needs to know who, that was the lyrics that came up there. No one really needs to know who Cardi B and Bruno Mars are, so it's just um, some basic uh, links to the socials. So I'll throw that in there. But if you have any specific message that, that you wanted to convey to the, the people at the video station, then, then you can put that information in here as well. Um, so of course you can preview, have a look at, at what that release is gonna look like in people's libraries, just like that. Happy with that. It has everything that I was hoping it would have. So I'm going to close that. And I'm going to go to the next section, which is the notification. So this is an important uh, piece of information. Um, there's two parts of the delivery. There's the, the release that's going to the recipient's library, like I showed you at, at, at the beginning. Um, and then there's the email notification that will go out to the recipient's email inboxes, alert them to that release, let them know it's been delivered. Uh, so that's really important and we have some, uh, as you can see, a number of different templates for that as well. I'm partial to the black template, so I'm going to select that one right now. Um, change video, new video from Atlantic, and leave myself as the name of the center, sender and feedback address. 
um, notification delivery days. If I wanted to um, send this notification after it's initially released for some reason, I would put that date in, in there. Um, if I selected a, a future delivery date for my release, that would automatically populate um, the notification delivery date so that the notification wouldn't be delivered until the, the release is actually sent. Um, so some other options I have here is enable a stream for notification that puts a play button on it, allows recipients to um, you know, start playing your music or your music video with one click from their email. Um, there's also a download from notification button that will only work for, for music. It won't allow video downloads, so I won't bother um, enabling that. You can also put a watermark warning on there. So um, if it is a, a very, you know, sensitive release, you know, pre-release uh, material, for example, you want recipients to understand, you know, that they have to be professionally responsible for it, you can enable that. It will just put up a, a small disclaimer that uh, reminds them that the downloads are watermarked to them. And, and if uh, they, they use it irresponsibly, then, then you'll be able to track that information. Um, so I'm going to hit preview notification, have a look at what this email notification is going to look like. And that's it right there. I like it. So I'm going to close that off. You can also send a test email to, to yourself to, to see what it'll actually look like in your inbox. But I don't need that necessarily. So I'm going to hit next. And this will take us to the summary page, just so I can have a glance at the dates that I've selected, make sure that those are right, um, the contacts, uh, a reminder of the destinations that I've selected, um, and the price of this. Now, I have a special deal because I work at Yangaroo, and this is a Yangaroo account. Uh, so the price of this, this is, uh, release is zero dollars, but you can see that it would normally be 250. That would be for the, the urban network. Um, video package is a 250 price point and I'm going to just going to jump back to destinations here so I can remove that package as a destination because I'm actually going to send this release and I don't want to send this to MTV and Revolt and Fuse and BET because they already have it. Atlantic already sent it to them so I don't want to confuse them and send it again. So I've removed that, removed that destination. It's only myself who's going to receive this. So I'm going to click through the steps because I've already completed them. And then I'm going to send this to myself and I'm going to show it uh, how it show you how it arrived in my library and my inbox as well. Okay, we're sending. There we go, my release is complete. So from now, um, I have some options here. I can share this to my Facebook if I'm logged in. Um, I can tweet that I've just sent this release. It automatically, um, put the tweet in there, but of course you can change the text, of course, log in and send that. Um, and I can also get myself a direct link. Now it's, it's important to understand that this only works for people who have access to this release. So recipients who have DMDS accounts, um, you can, you know, if you're talking to them, messaging them, direct messaging or, or anything like that, you can paste them that link and that will take them directly to the, um, the release details page itself. So I'll leave it do that right now. So that shows me that, oh, this will take me right to Cardi B and Bruno Mars, but I've got a login because I need access to it. So that's how the direct link works. Um, that's how the release works. If we go back to my library now, because if you remember, I sent this to myself. We should see this at the very top of my library.
there it is. There's Cardi B and Bruno Mars. Please me video. It's at the top of my library. All the information I've included is in there. And of course I can play it and download it, put it to broadcast and everyone's met the deadlines and everyone's happy. Also, of course, the email notification came through. I'll start playing that for you there. So they can play it right in their library, of course, just like audio. And if we have a look over here, if we can see this. This is my email notification that came through. There it is, it alerts me that it's there. It has that play button right on the top. That will open it up in the browser and start playing it for me right there from my, one click from my email as well. There we go. So that's how it works. That's how from the end of the front, how a release is created, how it's delivered to broadcasters, and how broadcasters uh, interact with it on their end. Now, there's one last thing I wanted to show you before we conclude this, and this is the report. So it, it's important, I'm sure you understand, as a, a sender, a content owner, you want to have an idea of what's happening with the content that you've delivered to the promotional outlets and broadcasters. So there will be a report section on your account which I will click through to right now. And there's a variety of different reports available to us, all kinds of data and analytics. Um, the, with a basic account, there's only one report. It is this one here, streams, downloads, and views by destination notified. So this will show me, I'm just gonna show you the data from an old release. This will show me everyone I've delivered my content to, my release to. Um, their organization and call letters, also the, the individuals registered at each organization. It'll also show me whether they've streamed, downloaded, or actually clicked through to the release details. Um, so this report, depending on how many destinations you have, tends to be very long, but of course it has the aggregate totals for streams, downloads, and views at the bottom. Um, and I can see exactly who at which organization has interacted with my content and who hasn't. Um, so that's what's available with a basic account. Well, Pro gives you all of these extra reports here that you see. Um, one of the cool ones is the release overview for country, U.S. or Canada. This will give you a color-coded map that will show you basically where the action's happening. So if you find that, um, you know, the action on your releases is happening in certain, certain areas, parts of the country or certain states, um, this is where you, you can find that out. So you have um, it'll also give you an aggregate idea of what time of day people are accessing this content. So to give you an idea that, you know, it's probably a good idea to send your release, you know, definitely between about two and five, um, but nine o'clock and it looks like about, no, maybe 11 would probably be the best times um, based on all of this data here. Um, we can also see you want to see the details, um, you can click on a state and it will show you exactly, um, you know, who's been receiving your content at that state. Give a second for that to load here. There you go. So it shows you who uh, in New York has been receiving um, your content. Uh, one last report I want to show you is, it's kind of like the, the first one I showed you, but it'll only show you what where the action is. Um, so this time of stream downloads and views report will show you exactly who is accessing at what time of day um, and how many times, that sort of thing. So if you are, you know, doing your efforts of, of calling and following up, you know, you can tell if someone actually did view your video or listen to it as they promised you they did. Um, and you can see what time of day that they did that. So you'll see at this time, you know, at 7 a.m., a username Music Choice at Music Choice downloaded this a whole bunch of times. Um, later on, it was downloaded by this person. 
stream, downloaded, stream, downloaded, viewed, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how you can keep track of all your data, what's happening on the broadcaster and with your content. And that is how it works. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the end of my presentation. So were there any um, really interesting or important questions? Yes, we have two questions right now that have been done. That is that we need to answer. Yes. And there are two other pending questions in the in the answer section. So we have like three, four questions uh, that people have. Okay. So I'll I'll answer these um, these open questions first. Uh, Harold Tillery. Um, well, there's there's two ways. One way is being in touch with those stations, those programmers directly. Um, a lot of uh, uh, you know, independents and, and managers um, will take it upon themselves to um, build relationships with these with these these uh, programmers, which is is typically a, a good idea to, to do, especially if you're going to have more and more content coming through. Um, so calling them and emailing them and and you know very respectfully following up on your release and then finding out their feedback on it um, is is one way to find out if it's played or not. Uh, but in that case, you also have to take their word for it. Um, but yes, with the, the Nielsen BDS would tell you exactly um, when and how many times it was played at each station. But keep in mind that only uh, covers stations that they actively monitor. Um, and it's not every station, but it is um, most of, of the big ones and the main ones. Um, so Michael Grayson asks for what you get with the $99 Pro upgrade. I'm just going to go back to the home page where there's a chart there. And of course, I made a typo. Uh, Michael, so there's, if you go to yangry.com slash music and scroll down, there's a, a chart that explains the difference between pro and basic. Um, some of the key features with pro is the ability, full access to the database. So you have every destination we have in the US and Canada, not just prepackaged lists that are available with the basic account. Um, so you, you can select stations on an a la carte basis. Um, and there is a discount on a per station basis when you, you look at the difference between the price of the packages and what's available with pro per station. Um, so that covers discounted delivery pricing. There's deeper reports and analytics like I showed you. Um, you get an account manager, so someone uh, on the business end, not just the technical support end, that you can count on to ask them, you know, what's the best way to use the service, um, all kinds of sort of tips and tricks. They, they can help guide you through it. Um, <coughs> pardon me. You're able to, to edit and resend your releases. With basic, it's, you send it and it's over. Um, so with, with Pro, you're able to send a new notification to the same recipients after the fact at no extra charge. So that's... That's a very important feature um, that helps get it back in their inbox, back in, at the top of their mind. If they, you know, if they possibly they were sleeping on it the first time around, there's no extra charge for that. Um, but I, I encourage you to go to yangaroo.com slash music to check out the details for the difference between Pro and Basic. And upgrading to Pro is very easy. There's a button on your homepage or your dashboard after you log in. Um, you pay the fee and it upgrades you automatically. Um, Neil Harris, is it best to hire a radio promoter? That depends. Um, it depends what you're trying to do, how many stations you're going after, um, you know, the radio promoter themselves, so how, how good or reputable they are. Um, it can be a, a little bit of a shady business, so I, I, I encourage you to be careful. Um, but if you are looking for, you know, a promoter or a tracker, as they're sometimes called, or pluggers, as they're sometimes called, um, depending on on the format, the type of music, we can um, typically give you uh, referrals to, to to good ones that that you know we know to be reputable and 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 their customers are happy with their work. At the same time, many people will um, take it upon themselves, either the artists themselves or their managers, um, to like I said, build those those personal relationships with the with the programmers, get that feedback directly. Um, and there's 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 merit to that too. Um, it, it, it's a matter of, of you know what your budget is and how much time you have. And uh, but but promoters they typically have you know a pre-existing relationship with the stations, 
and they, um, you know, they have a reputation to uphold. So they're not going to take your business if they don't believe in your song because they have to take it to radio and say, you know, we think you should be playing this song. And if they don't believe it themselves, that just looks bad. If it's a really bad song, it, you know, the, the radio might not trust them on the next release. Um, so, so it's there's there are a lot of merits to hiring a promoter. Um, Uh, I spent a lot of time on the video, David West, just to show you the, the process of creating the release and sending it. Um, it's, this, it's very much the same with music, only I'd be adding audio, uh, an audio track in there instead of a, a video file. And um, I'd be selecting, um, well, obviously, radio destinations instead of TV. That's why I showed you that. Um, Mariel Gonzalez is a comment for indie record labels to use the service. Uh, definitely, absolutely. Um, there's many, many indie record labels um, that use the service. Joshua, the first one was good. Did you go up? Oh, yep. Uh, Joshua Waits, or Waits. Um, why does it only have one contact at many of the destinations? I mean, at many of the destinations, that's all they want. It's, it's primarily the music director. Um, in some cases, in a lot of cases, they, they want that expanded. And sometimes there's, there's a central music uh, director um, email account that's registered there and, and multiple people have access to it. Um, in other cases, there are, you know, at, at, at many stations, there are, you know, upwards of, of a dozen different users can be on air, staff, engineering, things like that. It, it's all what the, the station, um, the broadcaster prefers. Uh, Natasha asked for a placement or response rate percentage for users. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that access to that, you know, analytics to be entirely sure. The reports show who's who's accessed it, who's downloaded it. I'm seeing downloads as a really good indication that that they they're looking to put that in their their playback systems on the air. Um, however, it's not a guarantee. Um, so there's there's no way for us to really know for certain. Um, if content is going to air at which stations, other than you know um, actually becoming a monitoring service like Nielsen BDS, which uh, which they do that um, too well for us to get into that. Uh, Neil Harris asks the requirements resolution for images and video submissions. Um, images, there's no requirement. You don't have to include an image. It's it's uh, optional. Um, the resolution is up to you. The uh, for the video, there are certain video specs that are required. Um, if you reach out to us, we can give that to you. I, I can put it up here right now. It's yangaroo.com/uploads. We'll tell you exactly what's required for broadcast video specs. So this tells you about the slate. Um, it has some tutorials for if you're exporting for Final Cut Pro or Adobe or Sony Vegas. Um, and then for NTSC, which is North America, HD specs are all listed here, along with closed captioning information. So all that, that is available to you at yangaroo.com slash uploads. Um, Paul Spencer, any promotional codes or specials for today? Unfortunately, no. Um, but from, from time to time, we do offer specials and pro promos. The best way to make sure you don't miss that is to follow us on the socials. Or GoPro. Mm -hmm. or GoPro gives you automatically a discount right there built in. So that's that. We are offering that today. Um, can video and audio assets releases be combined together? They can be. We don't recommend it, Shahid Suleiman. Um, the reason is TV wants video submissions, radio wants audio submissions. Um, putting different types of files in there can only confuse and 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 and, and make things you know, confusing like that. So, so stick to audio or video, depending on what type of destinations you're you're sending to. Joshua, again, with another question. Uh, I've noticed that in the states, contacts are not viewing the emails. What can you do to improve that relationship through contacts down there? It's I, I wouldn't say they're not viewing the emails. There's there's lots of action at uh, at K and W call letters in all the reports. Um, there tends to be a lot more, um, you know, there's, it's, it's 10 times the market that is, is Canada, so each format has, has many more stations. 
So there's a lot more zeros that you might see there. Um, also, it's it's tough to get noticed. It's tough to get um, you know action from radio. When, when if I'm a radio programmer, um, especially at, a, at a, a big market station in the states, I'm getting um, calls and content from you know all over the place, and I don't have time to you know actively discover new music. Um, when I'm, you know, have a list of songs I've, I've promised, you know, people that have called me to listen to. Um, so in that case, it's, it's, it's a matter of, of, of the promo work um, uh, to, to get the better response, uh, especially in the States. Um, Harold Tillery, do we submit to retail like Foot Locker, et cetera? Uh, we don't directly. We have um, a package of what we call DJs and retail providers. Um, which create playlists and handle the royalties for Foot Locker, um, you know, movie theaters, uh, restaurants, bars, other types of um, other types of, of destinations. Um, so we can help you find that list. It's called, like I said, BJ Retail Providers. Um, there's things like ERG, Promo Only, um, Mood Media, Play Network, um, all examples of those services which are, are, are in that package. Um, Marielle Gonzalez, uh, we do ex plan to expand the service beyond North America. Um, right now we're in talks uh, with the group looking to expand into a number of Latin American countries. The, the site is, is, um, is, is translated into Spanish. Um, we do a lot of, of Latin uh, music business in the United States. We're looking to expand that. Um, down into Central and South America and the Caribbean as well. Um, and we also have licensed providers in Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland. So if you're looking to send your content to those markets, um, we can do that through to you through our, our partners that license and um, administer and provider technology in those markets. Okay. Well, that looks like it's it. Um, thank you very much, everyone who, who joined and watched. Uh, like I said, this will be recorded after, and uh, our contacts were in, um, uh, you know, the, the emails and whatever you used to register. So please reach out if you have any further questions. Uh, you know, we're, we're happy to help and, and, and make this process as, as easy for you as possible. Okay. Thank you again. We're going to sign off now. Bye-bye. Thank you.